Welcome on back, everybody. It is episode 101 of the top five PvP battles. It's been a uh, quite a bit of time since we did the 100th episode, and I just had a bit of a break this summer, but we're getting right back into it, and you guys have sent me a ton of clips during this break. So we're going to have quite a few episodes coming out over the next few weeks here. Moving on to that PvP commentary, let's jump right into it. Our first clip was sent in by Arxia, and Arxia is playing a Magicka Dragonite Bomber. I've never seen something like this before, so let's break it down. Arxia goes for an Invisibility Potion into the Simmering Frenzy, and then hits someone with the Power Bash off the Vatran Sword and Board, pulling everybody on top. The big leap comes down, the procs debt, and a beautiful explosion. Just look at how many players he kills with this bomb. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And I love seeing all of the horses just fly off the bridge as they see Arxia pop out of stealth and bomb them. And here he goes for one more on the bridge here. Gets a great pull with the bash into the leap. Another huge explosion on the procs debt and tons of yellow players going down. Now I think one of the biggest downsides of doing this on a mag DK is of course the limited escape compared to something like a mag blade. That being said though, this is just beautiful stuff. And I absolutely love seeing people go for some sort of creative gameplay like this. And Arxia really went all out. Vampirism and everything. Just look at the huge smack with that bomb there. Beautiful stuff. Now moving on to our next clip, we have got Star Gleen playing some Stamina Dragon Knight. And uh, Star's just doing a little bit of a defense outside of this uh, outpost here. Jumps on top of the first red player there, kind of catching them off guard and quickly puts one of them down. And uh, this enemy player trying to go for that res, Star right away goes for the player that's uh, tempting the res. Quickly dots him up, hits him with the stun. And uh, Star finds himself just kind of being pressured by the red all over the place here. And uh, just gets back behind the pillar here, resetting the buffs. Um, got quite a bit of healing power on this damn DK too. So Star, I think, is going to stay as aggressive as he can here. And there you can see the he goes for the leap on the uh, red player. The red player reacts pretty well initially, but he doesn't have the healing power to continue taking the pressure. And the dots from the Dragon Knight just chewing through him. And Star Gleam just kind of uh, re-dotting everybody up, resetting the buffs. He's got the Vatron Greatsword ready to go. There's a big leap there. Goes for the Partial Charged Heavy into the Executioner. Another player going down. And Star uh, Gleam taking a little bit of pressure. Just quickly hits that Vigor Heal. The red players all over the place now. A few of them attacking him. Some of them trying to go for the reses here. And Star Gleam taking really good uh, advantage of the kind of disorganization here. The uh, players, they're not focused on a single target. Star is easily able to just chip away at these two that are attempting to go for the res. One of them goes down. This guy goes for a panic barrier to try to save his friend. Going for uh, just a vigor spam. Star Gleam finishing off that player with the Executioner. And now there's just two players left. This, uh, this one player with the Sword and Shield still trying to get that res off. Stargleen gets a nice leap, interrupting the res and hitting the target that he's working on. Going for that execute to finish him off. And now just the last enemy player left. Stargleen just dots him up, goes for the pressure. And uh, this guy does not have an answer to get outside of these roots. You definitely want to have that kind of mobility in Cyrodiil. And Stargleen's just able to apply consistent pressure. The enemy player cannot tank it. And he gets a nice wipe on the outpost. Moving on to our next fight, we've got Nedix on the Magicka Nightblade and doing a bit of bombing on it. You can see he's got the Prox dead and everything. There he goes for the Soul Tether into the Prox dead. And a ton of blue players going down on the stack. And Nedix not wasting any time, quickly getting back into stealth, repositioning where no one can see him there. And he's got his proc stat ready. Another ultimate up from getting so many kills on the first blast. And Nedix gets a great soul tether coverage into the proc stat again. The vicious death doing so much damage. Lots of blue players going down, attempting to res their dead players already there. And Nedix manages to escape again. A little bit dicey there, but he gets into stealth, resets the proc stat again. And he's going back for one more round. These players again uh, going for the res. More blue players have piled up here than before. A huge soul tether into the proc stat. The vicious death again. And Nedix right away back in stealth. So many kills with that last bomb. And he resets his uh, proc stat one more time. He's not done yet. The blue players still attempting to pick up the dead players. And there he gets a good coverage again with the Soul Tether. I think four or five more kills. And now the blue players have found him out of stealth. Nedix just goes for the Cloak. Manages to get into stealth just in time. 
and then slinking away out the side here as the blue players are looking for him on the flag. And Medix actually escapes after getting such a beautiful succession of bombs. That's some really nice stuff to see. And now for our next clip, we have Rias playing some Stamina Nightblade. And I love the style that Rias has here. This is just a very cool clip. You can see he quickly picks off the uh, first player that jumps on top. And now Rias is just going to jump in stealth. Hit them with that silver leash. Pulling the player in. He does not expect it. And an in cap to the face. Surprise attack. He goes down. Rias just spamming the silver leash on the next player here. Finally getting that pull. And after all that, the red player still didn't react when Rias pulled him in. And gets a nice kill on that guy. And now uh, another red jumps on top here. Rias just sidestepping the Dawnbreaker there, trying to dot him up. A nice in cap into the Executioner, and he goes down as well. And this guy's got to know what's coming. No, he doesn't. He gets pulled in, and right away, the surprise attack to the face, the Executioner. Sometimes that creative gameplay is all that you need. Great stuff from Rias. And finally, for our last clip today, we have got Animation Cancelling playing some Stamina Dragon Knight. And uh, as you can see, Annie just charged right into the middle of that big red group. Just uh, no second thought about it. And they chase him hard as he goes out the other end towards this building here. And uh, three red players follow him up the stairs. A fourth one coming around the corner. And Annie gets really great dot coverage right away on one player. Um, the target goes upstairs though. And Annie just goes for a uh, quick target shift there. Really good positioning here. Annie's just favoring his position over trying to hunt down a uh, enemy player. And he's just waiting for them to get out of position here. And he's doing a good job just using the staircase. Uh, moving around these guys a lot. So they cannot hold him still. And I'm pretty sure that Annie is using those snow. No treaders. I don't see him getting snared or immobilized by anything and you guys can see how important that is for this kind of gameplay. He's able to just kind of dance around in the pillars there, hits that guy with the Dawnbreaker, wears him down with the uh, dots at the end and Annie's right away moving on to his next target here. This guy attempting the res. He runs back desperately towards the rest of the red and he's hunting him down. He cannot deal with that pressure and uh, Annie just keeps pushing forward into these guys. And now these red turn around and they start putting a lot of pressure back into Annie. There's the incoming leap from the enemy Dragon Knight. Annie's staying very aggressive on top of this enemy Mag Sork though. And uh, he just goes for a nice little sidestep there. Quickly healing up and rebuffing. And then he gets right back on top of this Mag Sork. Goes for his Dawnbreaker as well. A nice cancel there. But unfortunately the enemy Sork still had some CC immunity. And uh, he did have his shield up. And he didn't get the combo that I think he was looking for. So he's forced to uh, back out of there. The enemy Sork just uh, throwing overloads like crazy. And Annie just quickly after resetting here. Charges right back out. Dots the Sork up. And the uh, red players look like they're trying to get through the door here. And he just doesn't want to let them out though. So uh, he gets a couple nice heavy attacks off there. Just landing a few dots. And trying to get these red players to turn around. Uh, resetting his buffs again here. And watching him play in these pillars with that Snow Treader set. This is actually really good. He can just move around these guys. They cannot hold him still. And Annie's just keeping up the pressure on the enemy players. He tries to go for that Dawnbreaker on the players trying to go through the door. But he gets stunned by the end of the enemy Sork streak. Annie doesn't want to let anybody escape though. And he just keeps up the dot pressure. And uh, the uh, red players eventually turn around and pressure him back. Annie taking quite a bit of damage here. A nasty incoming Dawnbreaker. Thankfully he did have the Vigor up though. And you can see even with the healing power from that Vigor. Annie's getting worn down by this pressure and he just goes for the kite around the pillars just uh flexing that immunity to snare and immobilize a beautiful kill there on the player that was uh, a little bit weakened and wasn't expecting annie to turn around like that he catches another red player coming around the corner too aggressive isn't uh, expecting Annie to turn and he quickly dots him up and now this player is heavily on the back pedal and Annie connects the executioner at the end finishing him off and a nice stun on the enemy Sork, just quickly dotting him up, popping a few heavy attacks off to get a bit of uh, stamina back too. There goes the Dawnbreaker into the dot, and it's just too much pressure for the Sork alone. And this enemy Dragon Knight, he did attempt to get that res, a nice little bash from Annie to stop it. And uh, now that the Sork's dead, he just dots up the DK, puts the work in. The enemy Dragon Knight trying to outheal it and dodge. 
and he finishes him off. And of course, for our bonus clip, we've got a bomb montage brought to us by Grab and Dragon. So I hope that you guys enjoy that as we say our goodbyes. A massive thank you and shout out to everybody for sending in those clips. Be sure to check out everybody featured in today's episode down below. Of course, if you guys want to send in your own clips for the top five, you can send that to ChristopherESO at Hotmail.com. You can give me a follow on Twitter if you guys want to keep up to date with me. Follow me on Twitch if you want to catch some of that live gameplay. And of course, check out my website, ChristopherESO.com, a hub for all of my ESO content, and it's got written guides to the builds as well. We are sponsored by What The Fast, they're a VPN for gamers, and they can give you better ping to your favorite games, free to try for the first month, a link down below for you guys. And then last but certainly not least, a massive thank you and shout out to all of my patrons on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show for so long. Thank you everybody just for tuning in and watching today. As always, I hope that you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Have a great night, everyone.